What's the what's the Star Wars song? Star uh, Wars, give me nothing, those Star. Oh, is that Star Wars? Nothing but Star Wars. Give me those Star Wars. Banana. <laughs> Star Wars, nothing, nothing but, but Star Wars. Wars. Give, Give me, me the Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> All right, we are here again, once more. And you know, you know, you, you would. Some might say we're striking back. Yeah, we are. God dang, that was horrible. Uh, All right, this is obviously, if it's not obvious already, what are we doing, Jeff? My English is better, I swear. I just. <laughs> I just kind of hit record and it just, just started going. I don't even know. You were off the cuff, as it were. Yeah, but, this is um, not live, but it's live. Before we see The Force Awakens, we are basically running through and dissecting and talking about the original trilogy of Star Wars films. Yep, New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and, and The Return of the Jedi. Return of the so, Jedi. we have already done A New Hope. Um, if you're listening to this or seeing this... Or if you come across this, you may have already listened to it, but it's there. It um, exists. Now we're doing Empire, and um, you should also see uh, Return of the Jedi when this is up, too, because we're just going to put it up all at once. Yep. Um, so, yeah, check those out. If you want to do it in order, you can go ahead and do that, but it really doesn't matter because it's not like you're watching the movies in order. It's a three-for-all. Uh, oh, nice. Uh-huh. Nice. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. So we just watched Empire Strikes Back. We did. Uh, go ahead and uh, open the beer, brethren. Here you go. <laughs> Jeff and I are equipped uh, both with either Winter Lager and Guinness Stout. Um, extra we, Stout. Oh yeah, extra Stout. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the Winter Lagers. All right. So I actually wrote some notes down. Um, but yeah, really, you did. I did. Just, just, just real quickly. I mean, Empire Strikes Back. You know, along with, the, of course, the original trilogy, is probably the most highly regarded Star Wars movie. I would, for, I I would, would say, say for a majority of fans. I would say that, that Empire is the pinnacle of Star Wars. As it should be. It's the middle right. of, of the of the original trilogy. You know, yeah, like, I mean, the, the... But even not even that, that it's the middle of the trilogy. It is simply the best Star Wars. Like, it... it I, I, like, my, my personal favorite... Is Jedi? We talked about this in the first podcast we ever did, but I recognize that Empire is the best Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I recognize that Jedi is awesome, and we're not going to talk about Jedi no. really in this because we're, this we're focusing on Empire. But I was thinking we were watching Empire. Um, Empire Strikes Back, hands down, has been my favorite Star Wars film for a long time. Um, but I don't know if it was the mood I was in yesterday or or what it was, but. I didn't enjoy it as much as I used to. You know why, right? Why? Because you were watching the Blu-ray version with all the, the unnecessary additions added to it. But you it. know what? The Empire Strikes Back is probably the one that was least touched, and, and I, I enjoyed watching it in, in that in that format. Yeah. Um, the uh, A New Hope, you know, I was able to ignore those things, and Empire didn't have too much of those, you know, CG additions and stuff like that. That wasn't it. Um, I think I don't know. Maybe it was just I was in a funky mood. I don't know. Maybe that's what it was. But I kept thinking. I was just like, wonder what it was. The whole time we were watching Empire Strikes Back, I really wanted to watch Return of the Jedi. (laughs) 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 Not even a joke. Like I was craving that. You can't knock. You can't knock Jedi. Jedi. I was craving little Ewok in my life. I was craving freaking Luke and Darth's. Oh yeah, I was I was I was craving that that end fight scene with freaking yeah. Emperor Palpatine, be, Darth Vader, and Luke Skywalker. However, Empire has a pretty sweet end fight scene too, which yes. we will get to. Which yes. we will get to. All right. Um, so right from the beginning, what did you notice about Empire that was different from A New Hope? I'll go ahead and answer first. The immediate upgrade in quality. Yeah, absolutely. I will say, yeah. George Lucas now had money. Yep. <laughs> and lots like, of it. Okay. 
So New so Hope, much money that he New hired Hope. a different director to do for it real. for him. <laughs> Which was probably the best thing he could have ever done. Um, I mean, I remember... Um, okay, I remember in our New Hope review, I had said that as the movie progressed, you could actually see Lucas's confidence in the story grow. Yeah. In Empire, that confidence is on full blast. Yeah, I actually... I, I thought about that, at what you said, yeah. while we were watching Empire. And it's just like... They, that's why I say that I have no problem conceding that Empire is the epitome of what Star Wars should be. You know, it's yes, it has the humor and it. it also has the tragedy. A it lot happens in that movie too. Yeah, a lot. Empire is not a movie you could just turn on and be like, yeah, I'm gonna watch Empire. No, 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 no. I feel that Empire, you have to really invest in it, and and it's worth investing in. You know, so. Um, I really dug the, uh, like you said, the the uh, the immediate upgrade in quality. It was a much more uh, focused film, uh, especially in the beginning. I mean, like yes, and the, and the, what's cool about it is that there actually is an interlude. There's a real world interlude because there was three years between um, the films New Hope and Empire, and there's been a few years. Between those films as well, since you we last saw Luke Han and Leia, yeah. So it was like a it was like a real time. Yeah, that's what, like movies don't really do that anymore, really. No, I mean they do, but it's like not that apparent. Yeah, yeah, yeah and how they they released them incrementally, like it, it was it was yeah. it was well done, you know, seventy seven, eighty, and eighty three, you know, yeah. And they, and they and they just kept getting better. But I mean, I agree with you. Uh, Empire is the is the pinnacle Star Wars movie. So much happens in it. I mean, as far as you know, you know, we were referring to Star Wars as a, as a science fiction fantasy opera. However, science you know, fantasy space opera. Science fantasy space opera. Yeah, good, good little blend of everything there. Yes. Um, you know, I like, and a lot of people refer to it as as a, as a space opera, and, and rightly so. You know, and and Empire, you know, totally, totally just indulges on that fact. Like oh, it's absolutely. so. It's so. It's grandiose dra- as hell. It's grandiose. It's dramatic, and it's and it's 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 a it's like a downer almost. It's it's, it's, it's a tragedy. That's the word I'm looking for. It is it's a tragedy. It is I mean, like such a tragedy. You know, you had the happy ending. Like now, it makes sense because you know it's been what thirty years since the movie, thirty five years because it came out in nineteen eighty. Um, holy shit! Do math. Thirty five <laughs> years. Mental regardless, math. Um, I don't do math. I write books. Um, you had the you had New Hope end with on, on a pretty happy note. You know they they destroyed the Death Star. Han and Luke got their medals. Chewie didn't because they're racist. And you know it's just kind of like you know. And it's not racist. Happy. That's they're they're specious. Specious speciesist. <laughs> Well, no, Wookiees are they're a the race. speciest. You're the species. They're a race, but they're also a different species. Well, they're, they're a bunch of different species. True. All right. Well, it's racist species. The, my whatever. dog didn't get a treat, is, y'all. The racist. point is, Chewbacca did not get a medal, and he was very upset. Don't get mad at me, man. Not all, not all dogs get treats, bro. Not all of them deserve it. Chewbacca, Chewbacca has that cool it. freaking bullet belt, though. That this bullet strap true. around him. This is true. This is true. But it so now in retrospect, but I don't think people in 1980 expected the ass kicking that the Empire delivered in that film. Like Vader was pissed throughout the entire film. I I thought it was really cool, and and just like the whole, you know, beginning with the whole uh, like Hoth setup and everything. I really Um, liked Hoth. Like I hadn't seen it in a long time. Like, the Battle of Hoth is, is, you know, next to the Battle of Endor, like, it's probably, like, the biggest battle in Star Wars, you know, movie history. Just, like, as as far as, like, people's admiration of it. Just, like, right. fucking Hoth, man. The Hoth battle is sick, man. Hoth fucking battle is AT-ATs, really sick. you know, you know, snow speeders. Like, I don't know, it's really cool. Um, Before we talk about the battle, though, there's a couple scenes before the battle happens. Mm-hmm. Um where you really notice the growth in these characters, you know, say a few years have passed, Han, Leia, and Luke have become really good friends, you mm-hmm. know? 
um, and the first thing you it, that you see is Han and Leia's relationship. Yeah. It's like a love hate relationship. Yeah, like you know, like I mean, we, we can we can expand upon that a lot, but like we all know the whole Han and Leia situation. But yeah. then you have um, Han and Luke's relationship, which I actually want to explore a little teeny bit more. Right. Because how you know how Luke, um, you know he get he gets stuck outside in the snowstorm. And he gets captured by like the the Yeti, I guess you want to call I it. I don't even snow know what, beast. It's, what it was called, but yeah, the snow yeah. Beast but it's pretty thing. much it's a it's a it's a snow Yeti, like whatever. It's like it's it, it's the abominable snowman. From the, the abominable Rudolph snowman. Movie. There you from go. The that's what movies. That's what the fuck it is. From Straight up. Um, yeah. So like he gets stuck out there, and and I remember um, when I was watching the film, how Han was so concerned and 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 like adamant about like where's Luke. When they were just like, oh, he didn't come back. He's like, what do you mean he didn't come back? He's like, well, no one knows where he is. Like, what do you mean no one knows where he is? Like, yeah, and he was like, like, immediately just like, I'm going out there. It's like, yeah, well, the temperature's dropping. He's like, yeah, and my friend's out there. You know, like, yeah. like his concern for Luke was kind of heartwarming. You know what it I mean? Was. Like, it was. It was like. Because Han's kind of a hard ass, but like he, he, you know, began to care about this, essentially a kid yeah. to him, you know. And and he became really good friends with him, so I thought that was pretty yeah. cool. Also, I, I noticed that in the entire original trilogy, the only non Jedi to use a lightsaber is Han Solo. Yeah, he did to open up the Tauntauns yep. guts, stick yep. Luke in, so he could he could warm up and not die. For real, yeah. So well, that was actually, pretty cool um, when he but, went out into the wilderness and, and and saved him. Yeah, and but getting back to uh, to Luke and the abominable snowman of Hoth, um, when he's in the cave hanging upside down, and like you see his lightsaber in the snow by, in the snow by him, then you see him use the Force. Yeah, which you yeah. hadn't seen Luke use the Force like that. Nope, you only saw him use it as as you know with the uh, with the photon torpedoes. Yeah, and it's like like a quick. Uh, shoot forward a little bit um, when he tells Yoda that he's learned so much already yeah. and, then, and then going back saying how like a few years have passed so he has you know had time to practice yeah. a little bit you know uh, and it, kind of figure well, it out it, it, it still took took him a lot of mind power yeah. to get it done but he did it you know I mean you, you do think, little things like that I mean and, and obviously I think I wonder if he actually was still communing with Obi-Wan's spirit Throughout that time, because there was, you know, that one point where, you know, right before, right after he escapes the cave and he's like near death or whatever, he sees Obi-Wan's spirit. So I'm wondering if that had happened. Dagobah. Dagobah system. Dagobah system. (laughs) Yoda. Ben. (laughs) Ben. But, um, I actually really like how in control Leia is mm-hmm. um, in her role as part of the uh, the rebels the rebel alliance like there there is she's not just a girl she's not the just the only girl in the galaxy no that's I mean that's I was actually I wrote here in my notes basically later on um, when the battle is, is starting how she's pretty much like she's arranging battle formations and attacks and yeah. she's pretty much like running the war room yeah you know and it's it's super cool um, but before we get over there, um, let's go over here. Just really, just a really quick thing about when when uh, Luke saw Obi Wan um, before he passed out, and then Han, you know, came through the apparition in the snow. Um, how he still calls him Ben. Yeah. And he and he will continue to call him Ben. I like that. Yeah, I do. Too. I like how he calls him Ben Kenobi instead of Obi Wan Kenobi. Um, and then of course he's instructed to go find Yoda in the Dagobah system. You know, so that's already setting the plot for a mm-hmm. little further on in the movie. Just little things I wanted to mention. The story forward, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what what's really another interesting thing is like Luke almost died. Yep. <laughs> like that was almost it. Like what if Luke Han had it. not found him at that moment? Well, Han, you know, yeah, Han actually like Luke is alive because of Han. Yep. Hands down, he's alive because of Han. Hans uh, down. Hans Hans down. Luke is alive because of Han. Um, not Hans. Um. And then I like that little scene when uh, when uh, Luke's rehabilitating. Yeah. He's in that water tube. With the big diaper on. Mm-hmm. You know that um, I, I heard that he actually um, had a near-death experience in that tube. For real? That like, there was a light shining down from above it. And um, at some point, it, it busted and shattered. 
into the water. Yeah, it was cool. messed up. And I, I don't think he was in it when it happened, or he was and it missed him or something. But yeah, some crazy shit. That's crazy. I forgot, I was watching some of the bonus material, and they were saying something like that, so it was pretty crazy. Um, yeah. Now we move on um, to Leia kissing Luke on the lips for the first time Luda. to make Han jealous. Yep. And of course, we all know now that they're brother and sister. What? what, what? Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Yeah, bro, come on, we haven't even watched Jedi yet, jeez. If you're listening to this and you haven't seen Star Wars, I'm going to reiterate, like I said in the last podcast. What? This is, we didn't pre, we didn't, we didn't preface the beginning of this, yeah. like the last one. This is not a spoiler-free look into this movie. Yeah, We're no, going to no, no. really talk about it. Full of spoilers. All right, so, um, yeah, so that happened, and, you know, Han's a little irritated, and yeah. uh, it's it, it's it's pretty funny to, to watch Luke just put his oh, hands yeah, he behind put his, his hands head. He's like, yeah. Trying not to smile. He's like, yeah, and that for, just happened. But what now? Remember what we noticed that we hadn't noticed before is that when when um, when um Leia kisses Luke, C-3PO just, like, runs up super quick to see yeah. what's going on. And then he looks at Han, and he's like, uh, uh, <laughs> what yep. is happening right now? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and dude. his face is perfect. Like, well, that's one of the things that, that that is one of the best things about Star Wars is that for a lot of significant characters, um, the two most prominent being Darth Vader and C three PO, their faces are static. The faces you see, they're static. They do not move. But the expressions fit so many situations. Yeah, those moments where Darth Vader's actually silent. Yeah. In like reaction to something, it's just silence and it's just his breathing. But yeah. like, it's just, like you can it, almost hear him thinking. Yeah. It's exactly. weird, right? Yeah, it's very it's it's eerie, eerie as hell. Um, okay. So when the Empire yes realizes that the rebels are on Hoth, yeah. In comes the first appearance of the Imperial March. Yes. Now this music is, besides the main theme of Star Wars, is the most iconic Star yeah. Wars song. It's the freaking Imperial March. When you hear yeah. that, it's like, oh, oh shit, shit, here comes the Empire. Yeah, like shit's going down. It's like, like oh damn, these assholes. Dun, 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 dun. But but like even just like the beginning drums like. Dun, it's so awesome. Y'all know the song. Y'all know the song. Of course, of course, of course. And scene. Um, yeah, the Empire is now on Hoth, and it's time for battle. What got me really excited is that one shot, and it's such a quick shot. Where you see like the empty trench, and then all the rebel um, yeah. snow fighters like straight, they just, they just line up with their guns ready yeah. right in the trench. Like it looks so badass. I was like, this is a war movie. Yeah. Like this is Star Wars. Yep. Here's like the first actual big giant ground assault. Yes, battle. that's what I like about the Battle of Hoth is that it is. It's not only in space. Yeah, it's not in space. It's it's down on the ground, and um, you know. A, to, to take a little detour, that's actually what I'm looking forward to about The Force Awakens is that there will be planetary battles. We've seen them in the trailers. Yeah, and even like the uh, even like the atmospheric battles, like they're yeah. they're they're spaceship battles, but done in a planet's atmosphere. Yes, which you've seen a lot of too, which is gonna be super yes. cool. But yeah, uh, specifically about the Battle of Hoth, like there is a lot going on in this battle. I mean, first of all, first of all, I like the snow speeders. I like the, 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 those ships. Or I think you also called them A-Wings. Is that correct? Or I no? call them A-Wings. I could be wrong about that, but I think they're A-Wings. Okay. Well, regardless... Because they're not X-Wings and they're not Y-Wings. I yeah. know what those look like, and I'm pretty sure the uh, Snow Speeder is also called an A-Wing. Okay. But don't quote me on that. Yeah. If a hardcore Star Wars dude is listening to this... Feel free to um actually us in the comments. You know what? Comment. Let me know, because yeah. I always call them Snow Speeders, but obviously they have a technical term, too. You yes. Know? But um, um, I like the design of those ships. Mm -hmm. I like that they require two pilots. Yeah. Or, or a pilot and a gunner, I, th I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, there's guns in the front, too. Like, it, But yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a rear gunner yeah. seat, which is cool. Um, what about that, that shot, man? When the, through the scope, and you see the AT-ATs for the oh, first yeah. time. Like, how fucking scary was that? That's friggin', like, 
You just, you're just you like, see the leg. All you uh, see is the leg, and it just goes it, up. It goes up, and then they zoom out, and you see freaking three of them. Yeah. And it's like, what is that? You know, like, what is that? So I, I like that little shot. Um, and then, of course, the whole Battle of Hoth happens, and it's great. Um, I think one of the coolest parts of that battle is when, when Luke's uh, speeder crashes. He gets out just in the nick of time and does that cool, dramatic dive into the snow yeah, after getting his lightsaber. Freaking throws a harpoon to the bottom of the AT-AT. You know, shoots himself up, not with drugs. Nah. <laughs> you know, he, 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 you know, he pulls himself up, uses his lightsaber to bust through the bottom, throws a freaking ion cannon in it, and then drops off and it just explodes. And that scene where it's falling over and like that yeah. cloud of black smoke just pouring out of its <laughs> neck. It was just so cool, man. It's just like a lot of really cool shots. Yeah, I remember there was a there was a shot. Um, okay, in the beginning of the battle, they were trying to fire at it like head on, fire at the uh, the ATATs, the Imperial Walk. I always called them Walkers, Imperial Walkers. They're Walkers. Yeah, they walk. That's what they do. Um, That's all they can do, much <laughs> <laughs> for real. But uh, they're firing at them and nothing's happening. They're like they're they're impervious to blasters and things like that. And then one of them falls, and remember you pointed this out to me, and they shoot at it, and then it explodes. And I'm like, wait, I thought you, I thought they'd said that you know, that that they were she, they were shielded against blasters. And you're like, no, 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 no. Look at where the where the laser hit. And I look, right before it actually explodes, the yeah, laser right hits. before it actually hit, there's a laser that hits like the neck, and there's this like I guess this there's there's an open weak, space there, yeah, weak point. So I thought that was very interesting. So mm-hmm. the ATATs. Are the dragons of the empire? Why is the weak point on a dragon its neck? No, but the dragons have a weak point beneath all of their their armored scales and Word. Like that. So is it their tummy? Yeah, it's it's like <laughs> yeah. Is it their grundle? Their grundle. <laughs> their gooch. Um. So yeah, you know, and then like that during that whole battle scene, we talked about how Leia just really, really being a. We didn't badass. even talk about how them wrapping the legs. Well, up. yeah. Oh, you know, I, I was. I guess I'm just kind of trying to go through it quickly. I, I don't know why. I mean, because there's a lot to this. There movie. is a lot. In we could talk about the Hoth battle for a, for a long time. Yeah. Let's. You know, but yeah, like, go, going back to Leia being really, really just like about this cause, man. She's a rebel with a cause. Mm-hmm. You know, you like that, and Indeed. and she's freaking good at it, man. Yes. To the point where it's like the Empire has breached the base. There's troops yeah. in the base. Darth Vader is literally around the corner. Han Solo's like, listen, we got to go. You know, yeah. they had their little fight in the hallway, Han and Leia. And Leia's like, what are you still doing here? Go. You got your clearance to leave. And he's like, listen, you need to leave with me now. Or I'm going to take you to your pod or whatever. Yeah. And then, of course, you know the the, the entryway gets blocked off to the pods, and he takes Leia with him in the in the Millennium Falcon, which I fucking love that name. Every time I say the Falcon. the name Millennium Falcon, it's so badass. But yeah, man, like like uh, she's so just in it, man. She's in it to the end, you know. Yeah. Like if Ha wasn't there to tell her to go, she probably would have died there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely. I think Leia would be the kind of girl. It would be the kind of woman. Uh, go down in- with the ship. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's a, that's a great way to put it. Um, then you have C three PO, who's just like I don't know if he's in the way, or he's just kind of like there, and they're like, "Fine, C three PO, come on." Well, and, the thing is, because like they're running, and he's like, "Wait for me, wait for me." Yeah. We're doomed. We're doomed <laughs> every fucking time. He, We're doomed. They're always doomed. <laughs> I mean, they sort of always are. Uh, but they never actually get to that doomage well, point. Three PO is kind of a pessimist. Yeah, well, he's a tight ass. Yeah. He's a dandy. <laughs> he's a dandy. Um, uh, yeah. So he's just like running around trying to follow them, and they keep they keep like running different directions because they keep getting trapped. Yeah. And so that's why he's like, "What are you doing? Wait for me." That's why he looks so sporadic because they're just like they're not really waiting up for him, you know? No, they're trying to get the fuck <laughs> they're out. They're trying to get the fuck out, man. Like the <laughs> shit's going down. Um, so yeah, they escape from Hoth. Luke sets the course for Dagobah. Dagobah. With trusty R2-D2. Of course. Um, this is actually then... my favorite part of the movie. I think um, a lot of people find Dagobah... A lot of people, especially kids... Like, if you were to show a child, like, a 10-year-old Empire Strikes Back... They'd probably think it's boring. Oh, they pr- they definitely would think it's boring, but like... Well, the Dagobah part, particularly, is what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, Luke sets the course to Dagobah, 
But then you have like the splitting story arc. Oh, that's right. That's where it does divide. This so you is the have first time that happens in the movie. So you have Han, Leia, and Chewbacca, and three and C three PO running from the Empire. Yep. They go into an asteroid field, and Han decides to land on a gigantic asteroid. When they go into the asteroid field, Vader's just like, send every ship into the asteroid field. I want them found. Yeah. They're like, what? Yeah, so of course the Millennium Falcon, you know, outmaneuvered, yep. um, you know, all the... TIE Fighters? TIE Fighters. God, I did that last time. Remember, I was just like, where are those... You can see my face right now when like, I, I do that. It's like somebody going on a roller coaster. <laughs> That's what they sound like, though. That's crazy. Um, yeah. So, um, and then, and then, of course, on Luke's side, he lands in Dagobah. Well, crash lands in Dagobah. I should say rather. Yep. Um, something I noticed hmm. when he sits down, he kind of sets up camp, whatever in his little camp, and he's and he's starting to eat. And he's like, "Here, R two, you want some power?" And he plugs in R two. Yeah, it's like and that's something I never generator. really thought about, or probably never even noticed yeah. really so much before. Is that he's got to charge his robot? Yeah, just like we got to charge our phones. Yeah, shit. like he like, had he had to plug him in, and R two was like, "Oh hell yeah, that's good." Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like, he just, the stuff. Yeah, that's the stuff. You know, <laughs> like nah, imagine give me that one point twenty one gigawatts. And, and then what happens after that? We meet Yoda. Yes, and Yoda is a crazy bitch. Yoda <laughs> is the craziest. Fucking hermit I have ever seen in my life. He's crazy. He's like, you're like, what the hell is this thing? He's freaking, he's 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 acting like a, like a nut. Yeah. He's rummaging through all Luke's stuff. He finds a flashlight. And he's like, it's mine. It's mine. Like it's a mine. like a little it's kid mine. or a senile old man. Yeah. And I think to this day, actually, one of the funniest things is when he grabs like Luke's like little fish stick or whatever the yeah. fuck it is, <laughs> and then he just like. Takes a little bite of it and like chews on it. <laughs> he's like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> he throws it. He's like, "What is this shit you're eating? <laughs> How do you get so big eating this crap?" Mm-hmm. Come to my phone, will you? <laughs> good food, good there. food. <laughs> yeah, not this time. That was but, so funny. But um, yeah, Yoda. Um, like it's funny. It like in the years since they have tried. Um, one other they've tried. They have. They've turned Yoda into this sort of like. You know, the wise old man figure. Super serious. Yeah, super serious. And, you know, yeah, his his particular way of speaking, like they've made it almost his own language and things like that. But mm-hmm. Yoda was really funny in Empire. Mm-hmm. I cannot believe how funny he yeah, was. Yeah, he cracked me up. All the time. Like, but then, like, when you see him get serious, he gets mm-hmm. like eerie serious. Well, there, well, there, therein lies Yoda. You know, like he was in Dagobah. He's been I, there for like he's been there for a long time. Years. You'd think. Remember how we were talking about in A New Hope how Obi Wan went to Tatooine and just mm-hmm. was basically probably for all intents and purposes meditating in the desert. Yeah, just reflecting and just you know probably the same thing with Yoda. Yeah, Yoda was in Dagobah and that's he made it home there and that's how he was. So he's there. Losing his mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just straight up. Either that He's, or like, Dagobah almost 900 some, years old. Either that or Dagobah has some really good shrooms. Well, I'm sure the atmosphere is just full of potent aromas yes. and whatnot. Um, <laughs> it is a very humid planet. It's like the Everglades. Yeah, there's freaking the mangroves. snakes and, and iguanas like, that's and shit. funny. There are actual snakes and iguanas. There. Yeah. It's like... Dude, Irvin Kershaw's is probably like, dude, bro, let's just put some snakes and iguanas yeah. here. He's like, yeah, that'll look awesome. <laughs> and it did. It was cool. Um, but, um, yeah, like, like Yoda is basically there. Just, he's almost 900 years old. He's been there, done that, you know, he's just kind of chilling and, you know, the person comes and I honestly think that from the get go, Yoda is testing Luke's patience when he arrives and he's acting like a nut. He's testing oh, Luke's absolutely. patience because Obi-Wan and Yoda are in communication. They're in correspondence. Yes. You know that because the second Yoda gets serious, you hear he, he he's just like I cannot I cannot teach him. Yeah. He's too angry and impatient. He I I cannot teach him. Yeah. I actually And like, it looks like Oh shit, this crazy motherfucker is Yoda. The all powerful warrior I was looking for. Yep. And real quick, I'm sorry, I just I keep saying things and I keep thinking of things yeah, that, I know, Yoda, I have a thought that Yoda says. Okay. 
He's like, I'm looking for a powerful warrior. Luke tells him. And Yoda tells him, war does not make one great. Yeah. And I was like, oh, he said, I'm looking for a great warrior. And he says, war does not make one great. And yeah. I, 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 when he said that, that stuck with me. Yeah, that's very true. I, um, I remember watching last night and wondering, you know, okay, he crash landed here, but Dagob is an entire planet. Like, how the hell are you going to find Yoda on this planet when you don't even have a freaking star, uh, starfighter to cruise around in? It is a movie. <laughs> well, no, I know, no, but 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 herein lies the rub. Is I believe that Yoda sought Luke out because, like you said, he and Obi Wan's spirit were communing, mm-hmm. and so when Luke got to Dagobah, maybe Yoda was you know Ben let Yoda know, and Yoda went and found him. And then, like you said, he deliberately tried to, he deliberately tested Luke's patience and, and all of that. Um, you know, they say like first impressions are everything, but sometimes mm-hmm. first impressions are actually tests. Mm-hmm. You know, so, I mean, it's just, it, yes, it is a movie, but that rationale, like, actually, like. Also, Yoda's house was nearby. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I don't think, like, Yoda traveled really far to find Luke. If anything, I just think that where Luke landed... I mean, if we're going to go that route, that where he landed was just kind of... He was meant to land. Yeah, I was going to say that, that was where he was meant to land. Unless Yoda freaking just, like, force grabbed him out of the sky hey, and dude, crashed him down. Hey, dude, you saw Yoda just, like, lift the, the, the X-Wing out of the water. Like and that was, was underwater nothing. with no momentum. Imagine, yeah. he's like, oh, there's the X-Wing in the sky. Let me just pull that bitch right down here. Cause I think it just new ornament start, for my swamp water. I think it did just start kind of crashing out of nowhere. Yeah, he 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 hit like a big wall of fog. Yeah, he started hitting some trees, tall trees, and yeah. he so. crash landed. All right, so, um, moving back to Han and Leia in the Millennium Falcon, in the asteroid field, and they're working on the hyperdrive. Um, Han goes in and starts putting the moves on Leia, man. Of course. And they have their little back and forth, and he smooches her. So there goes Leia's <laughs> love Leia, but man, she kisses every dude in this movie. She does. <laughs> she does. Um, no, nah, she's not. Horrible. First of all, that, she, that, that, but, that's, but that's a rude is, thing to say. I think we can say that, that Han kissed Leia. Leia did not kiss Han. No, of course. Of course, but... She was digging on Han because later on she, you know, she'll she'll go up to him and she'll touch his shoulder, she'll oh, grab no, his she arm, definitely she'll kiss him, him on the cheek. Yeah, 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 definitely. But in that first instance, like I'm just saying, it's just fun to talk. It's just fun to poke at. Yeah, her little back and forth with Han and Luke. Oh um, my god, that was classic. Now, back to Dagobah. When, you know, Obi Wan pretty much convinces Yoda to to teach Luke. Yeah. Now you see them training. Yoda backpack. Yoda backpack. Yoda all backpack. day. We all want Yoda backpack. But I, I want a Yoda why, backpack where... I don't know why it was never made. I want a Yoda backpack where Yoda's actually sticking out of it. And his his hands rest on your shoulders. And it and, looks like he's whispering in your ear. Yeah, and but I want there to be a, a button so you can hear him talk. <laughs> and, the, and the speaker's in his mouth hole. How creepy would that be? <laughs> <laughs> and air and, and air comes out of his nose like he's breathing on your nose. Now, see, this is getting real. Yeah, creepy. that's getting. That's I don't getting want that real... Yoda backpack. Yeah. No, 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 you can keep that Yoda backpack for Yoda self. That was uh... bad. That was so <laughs> bad. Your damn self. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Um, this podcast is full of horrible puns. It's bad. We're, we're we're so boring. Like, why are you listening to this? Whatever. It's Star Wars. Don't listen Star to this. Star Wars. Nothing but Star Wars. Wars. Give me the Star Wars. Banging in there. Um. Yeah. So. Uh. That that whole part where he's where he's you know uh, Yoda's training uh, Luke. And he's basically just like, dude, I, I'm, I gotta chill out, you know, like, I, gotta, I just gotta chill out for a second. And he looks over, like, into like a, I don't know what you'd call it, almost like a, like a grotto yeah, kind of like area. Little, 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 yeah, like, like, it's like a little, like, it's like a little cave, like, like a root cave or whatever. And he's like, something's not right. I'm gonna go check this out. And, uh, he's like, 
you don't need you don't need your weapons. You know, don't go in there. You don't need your weapons. Uh, Yoda tells Luke. Yeah. Luke brings his so weapons anyway. Him, and he asks him the question, "What's over there? What's in there?" And Yoda responds to him, "Only what you take with you." Yeah. And this is, I would say, out of any I think this is where moment you, in what I was gonna say, I think this is where your 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 statement from earlier about Dagobah having a bunch of pleasant aromas in the air. Yeah. Is justified. Well, Exa- yeah, and that goes with what I'm about to say is that this particular scene is probably the strangest scene, and, it's definitely and the, the most eeriest. it's the and it's it the most foreshadowing, almost like I don't know what the word is for it, but just like it puts the truth under your nose, like it's just it's so blatant, yeah, without being blatant. You know what I mean? So it, it leaves you wondering. You're just like, yeah, like what You're is like, this? What like, the, what, what is the connection that yeah. Luke has with Darth Vader? What is the connection? Is it is it only because it shows Luke's true fears? He's taken that with him. Is it you know he's scared of Darth Vader? If he's afraid of becoming Darth Vader, turning to the dark side? Because in that particular scene, Darth Vader walks through that that little cavern. Luke draws his lightsaber. Darth Vader draws his lightsaber. They exchange a couple of, of swings, and Luke cuts Darth Vader's head off. Luke Darth just, Vader's head lands on the ground. The mask explodes and reveals Luke's face. It's it's probably the most... It's probably like the... Not the not the deepest, but I, I don't know what the word I'm dude, trying to get. It, it's, the, it's the most, like, Inceptionist part of yeah. the Star Wars movies. I actually, like, what really <laughs> strikes me about this scene is the expression on Luke's face. Not, not, not Luke... But, uh, headless Luke. Headless Luke, yeah. Um, the expression on the, on that face, like the, you can read so much into that. It's like, it's like shock, a it's awe. it's a sh- yeah. It looks like a help me. What help is becoming me, yeah. me face? It's just like it, it's it, and it's then and then you actually do see it reflected on Luke's own face. Mm-hmm. Like it's really funny. And well, even, not funny, but like you know, ironic. And um, even after that, um, when he continues training, training with Yoda, and he gets distracted by R two, he's still so irritated and pessimistic. Even then, he still is. And I think it's because what he saw in that grotto area like disturbed him. He he's he's even more freaked out now. And Yoda's like, dude, you can do this, you know, like just do it. And he's like, I'll try. He's like, no, don't try. You don't You don't try. You do it or you don't do it. Do or do not. Yeah. There is no try. I was trying not to exactly quote him. I was just trying to say what he said, you know, because you, 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 you sit there and you got to back up and go, do or do not. There is no try. I mean, you get can't real dramatic anything. with it. You know what I'm saying? But then, you know, Luke is like, it's too big. I can't, I can't lift the X-wing yeah. out of the water. It's just too big. You are asking for the impossible and walks away all disappointed in himself and being like, I can't do this. Yoda straight up shows him up, lifts the X-Wing out of there, puts the X-Wing down, and Archer's just sitting there all excited, and Luke is just like, I dude, don't I don't believe it. And Yoda's like, that's why you fail. Dude, no, I find that to be probably one of the most important pieces, the most important exchanges of dialogue. Maybe in the entire... Star Wars saga. Obviously, there was one other in this film that supersedes it. But, um, you know, I don't believe it. That is why you fail is, like, think about how important belief is to a Jedi. And how much of their power they draw from simply believing in the Force. So, And then that brings us to Yoda's Force speech. Which, yes. in my opinion, is the most beautiful part of the movie. Mm. Where he talks about how the Force surrounds us, it binds us, how we are luminous beings, not the crude matter. Yeah. You know, like, it's... We talk about, you know, like, the, the, the philosophy and the spiritualism that the Force is and that Star Wars, you know, represents. And it, 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 it does it so well. Like, when Yoda explains that to Luke, man, I just, I love that line, man. Like, luminous beings are we, not this crude matter as he, as he pinches his skin. You know? It's like, it's so much more than this and and Luke has a hard time grasping that, you know? He eventually does, but in those moments, he's just like, so confused and Yoda, Yoda sees that and he's like, no more will I teach you today. 
not like I'm going to leave you with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then Luke starts having visions. Yeah. He starts seeing the future. And he's like, I got to go. My friends are in trouble. And and Yoda doesn't want him to leave. Like, dude, like it's it, this is this is really dangerous. Like, yeah. you're going to be tempted by the dark side. This is a bad time for you to leave. Another foreshadowing about, you know, uh mm-hmm. back Anakin Skywalker and the prequels wanted to grow up too fast. He wanted to be a Jedi so bad. He's, 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 he's trying to speed it up, speed up. Oh, I can do this. Oh, I can be powerful. I can do this. I can do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Luke's running away, trying to go save his friends and potentially face Darth Vader when he's not ready. You know? Yeah. It's that, like, that, that, that anxiousness and that, and that almost, um, not irreverence, but like, um, you know, he's just not listening. No, it's, just it's, it's straight still, up not it's listening. Still immaturity. He's still very immature. Yeah. He's still growing and learning. Um, you know, I, I get the concern for your friends, but it, 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 it's just, I don't know. How, it put Luke in a horrible situation. Yeah. I, I think in my situation, I think if I were in that situation, I'd probably make the same decision as Luke because they're my friends. Mm-hmm. Like, in my opinion, if I have a friend who needs help, I have no choice. I have to help them. But you also remember is that, you know, Luke asks um, Yoda, he's like, are they going to die? Yeah. And he's like, well, it's tough to see because yeah, the future is always in motion. So it's, it's yeah, they were in trouble, but it didn't necessarily mean that they needed Luke's help. Yep. You know, Luke actually, I think, made a mistake going there. Well, he definitely Cause, did. Because we'll talk about it, but everything that unfolds there, like... Luke didn't have to be there to save them. Yeah. Everything happened without Luke. Yep. Luke got put in a horrible situation and then had to deal with something he super, was not super. Ready to and, deal yeah, with. he was not ready for it. He man. was not ready to deal with it. But that. you know what? That's what's awesome about Star Wars is like, this didn't happen because it needed to happen for, for this other story arc. Mm-hmm. Everything happens individually and it's everyone's journey. You know, like it's happening simultaneously, but it's not like, like, like Luke's story is so individualized and you know what I mean? Like, Mm. like, yeah, like it's all about the characters and the friendships and everything, but like the most important journey is Luke's journey. Indeed. And it, it, in this movie in particular, it's like dug fucking right deep into your soul, man. Yeah. (laughs) Like, now this, let's talk about how beautiful Cloud City is. Cloud City is pretty awesome. I mean, Okay. I don't remember seeing the original cut. It's a city Empire. in the clouds. Right. I don't remember seeing the original cut of Empire. Cloud City. So, I... <laughs> this bastard. This is what I do with every podcast. Lando. Lando, yes. This is what I... That's what I really did want to get to, though. Like, can't... Like, the cool side of the pillow himself, Billy D. Williams. <laughs> like, I mean, for real. Because, like... Okay, so Han and Leia and, and Chewie and 3PO, they do the... I No, they don't get the hyperdrive running again, but they they get out of the asteroid field. Yeah, it's meant to be repaired um, yeah. at and, and, and Station. Like, to backtrack a little bit, you know, the Empire uh, recruited, hired bounty hunters, among whom is, of course, Boba Fett. The Fet Man himself, um, you know, to cap to capture them, bring them to them, and we see Boba Fett's ship, uh, you know, de- follow them out of the asteroid field. So we have a little bit of foreshadowing there. What what's going on there? Well, he you know? the um, Millennium Falcon leaves the asteroid yeah. field, and the Star Destroyers literally right there. Yeah, and so they pretend to be. They turn off their. Uh, their power the auxiliary and just powers. yeah auxiliary power yeah. and they just chill until the garbage leaves the oh yeah dude no we've completely forgot that part yes well I, I didn't mention it but when you said Boba Fett let the asteroid field I just want to make sure that we corrected that because yeah, yeah of course he follows them in the junk pile that's ejected from the Star Destroyer before they go into hyperspace which is really smart of Han to do that but it was also smart of the bounty hunter to wait there yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so he was able to follow them to Cloud City and that's how you know going forward a little bit that's how the Empire knew where Han and Leia had gone and they knew to 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 intercept Lando before they before they arrived that way they can pretty much capture but like the 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 
<laughs> when they first get there, Han's all like, Lando's my friend. And Leia's, and Leia says, you, so you trust him? He's, well, no. <laughs> he's my friend. And then he and then he fakes like he's gonna fight him. And then he hugs him. Yeah. Lando's awesome, dude. Lando's. But really that's the cool. thing is like Lando, you know, going to the part where Lando he's walking around and he's like, yeah, you know, we don't really get much Imperial. You know, they don't bother us too much because yeah, we're, we're kind of at, we're out of here. We're small enough and we're kind of far. Um, and I just made a deal that's gonna keep the Empire away from us forever. Yep. And he freaking opens the door and there's Darth Vader and he's like, they came right before I, you came. I'm sorry, dude. I love this scene. Because the only thing that Darth Vader says in that entire scene in the dining room is, we would be honored if you would join us. Mm-hmm. Like, that's it. That's all the dude says. And everything else is just like... And then right before, though, uh, 3PO gets trapped and chopped up. Yeah. You know? and, and talking about relationships between characters, I found this part interesting is how much Chewbacca took ownership of C-3PO. Oh my gosh, yes. You're he was just like, right. he's like, where's C-3PO? Where's my dude? You know, and he finds him in like the junk pile and he's and like he's digging through sad. things. And he's freaking out. And then he tries to put him back together. Like, <laughs> it's so, like, it's, it's really cute, but it's also like, man, like look at this beast caring for this super annoying droid just because they just been through so much together. Yeah. You know, like, like you never know like the people that are going to be important to you. You know what I mean? 3PO back. Three P Yes <laughs> Yoda backpack and three PO backpack. And the whole time you're wearing three PO backpack, he's complaining about how <laughs> how come you didn't just attach his legs so he wouldn't be in that ridiculous position. <laughs> also it's heads on backwards. Yes. His head has to be on backwards. Um so yeah, Lando making that deal with the Empire. Now moving on from there, how Lando actually tries to help out after and undo his wrongdoing. I mean yeah, you kind of want to be a Lando that was shitty, but he said it and it was true. He had no other choice. No, he didn't. Like, he couldn't. He what, what was he supposed Vader to do? Vader would have killed him. Vader would have he... straight up killed him. Like, choke, force choked him to death. Like he could not do anything. And so, yeah, it wasn't like super heroic of Lando in the moment, but he did redeem himself. I see. Like Lando's one of those love hate characters where you're just like, "Fuck, what a dickhead." But, yeah. But then he's like, he really has. Like, I'm not legion. He's a real person. Yeah, he's just yeah. I that's it. Like how just, he's a real person. And he's like, he, I got my own problems, man. He's got to like, think about you know. He's in charge of a lot of people. He like he said he he is responsible. He said that in the film. He, he wants well for his friends in the rebellion, but he also has his own problems. Yeah. So you know it's like, but he does redeem himself. I I'd, I'd say he does redeem himself absolutely, and even more so in Jedi. But yeah, well, that, exactly. Like they're like that's why. Like right now, I'm just like, hey, he's still kind of iffy. Like man. he didn't do that much of like that but, like, great of a yeah, thing but, right but, now. But but, but uh, it, you know, watching Empire again for the first time in a long time, I had actually forgotten how shitty Lando was. Like whoa, I didn't even realize that. Like momentarily, he was nah. shitty momentarily. But um, and then you know, Han getting frozen in carbonite. <sighs> that is. That's probably the saddest scene in the movie. No, it is the saddest scene in the movie. Absolutely. It's just... I mean, first of all, you have Leia panicking. I think this is the first time we've seen her panic in the in the, in these movies. Um, you know, they have the last kiss and all that stuff. And then, you know, the famous line is, lines of dialogue. I love you. I know. Yeah. Fucking badass. Douchebag, but awesome. Yeah, I was gonna say I was like dickhead, but badass. Like, come on, that's awesome. He's just right. like, I know. Like, I've been trying to tell you. Actually, one of my now ex- I'm gonna get frozen. No, no. Like, what good does this do me right now? No, you know what? <laughs> one of my exes actually Han soloed me, and I noticed, and I noticed it after the fact because I was just like, I adore you, and she says, I know. And I'm oh, like, oh, she's shooting completely Han Solo you, but she, but she, but she Han Solo you. you no, know, she Han Solo me. We were texting, and, and I was just like. Wait a minute! Did you just Han Solo me? <laughs> and she's like, "Yes, that was awesome." So, um, so it was actually a comp- role reversal. I got Han- I got Han Soloed by Princess Leia, but uh, it was basically the Jedi. I don't know, but anyway, enough about Jedi. Um, I, you know, it's it's like that scene bothers me. I actually remember seeing that scene as a kid, and I was actually scared. Yeah, that's terrifying. It, 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 yeah, it's like... They're like, we're going to test it on Solo. We don't know if he'll live. And, and remember, Boba Fett's like, dude, he's worth a lot of money to me. Yeah. And Vader's like, listen, the Empire pay for it. Yeah. 
It's like, it's like, it, it's like have you ever seen Semi Pro? Wow. When the guy does the half court shot for ten thousand dollars, and he's he's just like, dude, I don't have ten thousand dollars. He's like, don't worry, the beer company will pay for it. He's like, it's not a real beer company. I thought it sounded professional. <laughs> That's basically what Darth Vader tells him. He's like, don't worry, we'll we'll we'll, we'll take care of it. We got we got money. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, of course. I but mean, they, you know, hey, like it's hey, not. Hey, they did just dissolve the Senate, <laughs> so they've got enough surplus yeah. in the budget. Yeah, but it's like they weren't. It wasn't set in stone that that. Well, carbonite, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't for sure that Han was gonna live. Yeah. And that was really that 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 scene bothers me just because of how sad Leia looks and just how Chewbacca's just like freaking out and he's like and, and Han is so brave, man, just saying like, dude, don't worry about me. This is not gonna help me. There'll be another time for this, yeah. you know? And, let's and Han just straight up he accepts it. He accepts that yeah. he he might die right and now. Let's not forget that before this, Han was tortured. Mm-hmm. Straight up tortured and by they did, Darth And they Vader. didn't even ask him any questions. Yep. All you heard was Hans scream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was... That was that, that whole... Empire's so crazy, dude. Yeah. A, a lot of sad shit happens. So, um, one part of that scene I actually really noticed is before Han gets frozen in the carbonite, there's that one moment where Boba Fett walks away from Vader and you just see Vader... And then it cuts to Leia, and she's just looking at Darth Vader. It's probably the closest she's been to him since the beginning of the first movie. Mm. And she's looking at him with this, like, you're a monster, but there's something attracting attracting me to you. And it, But oh. it's, you know what I mean? Like, she's looking at him like, who are you? Yeah. You know? Yeah. You evil monster, who are you? Like, there's there's a connection between them too, you know. And, and never we, noticed that. Never watch her face that. in that scene. It's just like she's looking at him like, "Daddy, <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, <laughs> what have you become?" <laughs> you know. But that, but that's the thing is like you don't know this at this moment. Yeah. But like in retrospect, in hindsight, when you fucking look at her face, looking at him, it's like holy crap, man. It's deep, man. It's real fucking deep. That's a that's a good move by uh by a uh, Kirshner there. Um, you know, of course, Vader being Vader and altering the deal. And telling you to pray he doesn't pray alter it any further. Alter it further. <laughs> you know what I wanted to mention real quick? Stormtroopers and how they're notoriously oh, bad at aiming. I wanted to say this. <laughs> they're, because but they're known what? for that. They're just known for being horrible get, at aiming. Like, like, you're a fucking stormtrooper. <laughs> what does that even mean? All it means to me is that you're bad at aiming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to and say And you that. have really bad armor. What do you mean? Like... Oh, like it doesn't protect you from laser blasts? No, because you saw one of them get shot, and there's this big smoldering black hole in yeah, his man. chest. Yeah, I think that was from Han's pistol, though, because Han is a badass pistol. Oh, no, wait. He was in Frozen and Carbonite at that po- point in time. He definitely wasn't shooting anybody. Um, yeah, so, you know, that that everything happens. Um, Leia and, uh, and Lando, you know, end up getting out. Luke's just getting in to Cloud City. Vader's bait worked. It's a trap, as Leia said. Then Luke confronts Vader. This And this is what we're watching the movie for. Because we know this is going to happen. We know this has to happen. The first super legitimate lightsaber fight in the Star Wars franchise. Yeah, you had that one in the first one. But it's not like this one, man. Oh, no, no. This is like... This was legit. Yeah. And 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 I love how like there were so honestly, many different um different um like like sets for this fight yeah and different scenes like it just moved and moved and moved it was it's so good man I mean in all honesty I think I might like this lightsaber fight better than the fight from Jedi. Well, I like the fight from Jedi for different reasons. We'll talk about that when we talk about yeah. Jedi. But they're both good. They're very different. Yeah, very different. And and like and and you know what. Basically, if you look at it, the set, the carbonite freezing chamber, all the smoke rising, there's blue in the background, orange in the foreground, and then you just see you just see Darth Vader, like the silhouette of Vader. I'm sorry, but if that's not a science fiction metaphor for hell, I don't know what is. Yeah, true. Like Luke is in the depths of hell right now. One of my favorite uh Parts of that 
that scene is the the famous line impressive most impressive yeah i freaking love when vader says it's so fun there's a there's a meme where it just darts vader like with his head to the back just a little bit and it says impressive (laughs) i love that shit um so yeah yes we do see luke display some really cool skill like the force jump he did like he jumped out i think that was the most the 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 most impressive um (laughs) but i think that was the most impressive moment like, the moment where Darth Vader said most impressive is where he, like, you know, gets Luke into the ch- freezing chamber. He's like, all too easy. And then Luke and then does that frog was, jump out yeah. of it. Dude, he, like, see, that took practice. Yeah. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. Mm-mm. And it's one of those moments where you see Luke do something amazing. Yes. And, I mean, nothing close to what he does in Return of the Jedi, but you see him, he's like, I'm in a situation, what do I do? Oh. This is what I do. Yeah. And he was able to do it. It was pretty cool. Yeah. And then as the fight goes on, Luke is just getting beat up and beat up. Vader stops even using his lightsaber to attack him. He just starts ripping shit off the wall and yeah. throwing it at Luke. And Luke is so beaten down that he's even like, like his reaction time is just slowing. Oh, yeah. You, you ever you notice that when, when he gets hit by something and he'll turn around and swing at the thing that just hit him. Yeah. And by the time he does that, something else on the other side is hitting him. Yeah. And it's just like he's he's beaten pretty much. And actually, Vader says that to him. He's like, you are beaten. You yeah. know, like once he gets him outside and they uh, they fight on like that, I guess. I don't even know what platform. you call it. Like it's a platform that like extends out into a, a freaking abyss. Yeah. You know, and that this part, this is the freakiest part. And of course, the part where you know, Luke finds out that Vader's his father. Spoilers, man. We were we were teetering so close, and now's the time. Nah, now we're going over the edge. The probably most iconic line in film history. No, I am your father. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you know what's funny? Like, most people say, Luke, I am your father, and that's not the line. Yeah. It's no, I am your father. Yep. And it's, it's no, I am your father. Like, there's that emphasis. It's like, whoa. Yeah, and what's cool whoa. about it, like, that part, is just like, well, it, I mean, well, we totally didn't even mention that Luke gets his hand cut off. Yeah. His lightsaber just of course. Is, is gone. It's down. It fell in the abyss. Which is why I don't get how they're always able to find his lightsaber when it's just fucking gone. What are you talking about? He made another one. Oh, did he make another one? Okay. I was like, how was that? In the third I mean, one, know, in the third one they green, mentioned how he but... reconstructed it. Oh, okay. Remember, it's green, yeah, not blue. Yeah, I know blue. it's green. I know it's green. But, like... His lightsaber's blue, remember? I remember. Wait, is it blue or green? No, it's it's blue. Yeah, and it's then his father's his father's lightsaber. lightsaber exactly, and then and then he gets a green one when he mm. makes his own. Uh, I didn't. realize That's why it's green in Return of the Jedi. I didn't realize it. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so so Vader's like, you are beaten. You know, don't resist. Yeah. Don't resist. Come join me. Come join me. And he's like, I'll never join you. And he's like, you know, Vader mentioned something about his father. He's like, what did Obi Wan tell you about about your father? And Luke's like, he told me enough. He told yeah, me that he you. Told me he told me you killed him. And he's like, no, I am your father. And then Luke's just like, fuck my life yeah. right now. Oh, I, really? I lost my right hand. My lightsaber's down the gutter. I'm literally hanging above nothing. I'm probably about to die. Now I kind of want to die because this is bullshit. And he actually, he refused to believe it. And then Vader's like, like dude, you know it's true. You yeah. know it's Search true. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. And I think yes. going back to that scene in Dagobah when Luke kind of saw his face in Vader's mask. That's pro- that's it's all bad. those things, man. Luke had this fear and he had very realized fears. But I also think there was something in the back of his mind that he did not know. Yeah, the fear of the unknown. It was the unknown. And it was like that... that you know, search your feelings, you know it'd be true. And he's like, no, fuck, you're right. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, there There are so many layers to this movie. And like, yeah, we're not even done because, you know, but I think that scene is one of the most important scenes in cinematic history because if you got to think about it though, Plot twist. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm saying in a time before, you know, Facebook, Twitter, social media, all that stuff, um, where the only reliable news about movies was hearsay and dirt sheets and all that stuff, this twist threw, just drove everybody over the edge. This is what, that is the line that made Star Wars. Mm-hmm. No, I am your father. Everybody's like, what? 
What? Mm-hmm. Are you kidding? Like, that is the line that made this franchise. First movie did good. Yeah. Okay, here's Empire. This blows your mind. It blows your freaking mind. It blows mind. your freaking... Yes. And, wh- and I think when Darth Vader, um, he, you know, he's like, stretch your feelings, you know, it'd be true, you know. And I, I can like, actually hear the compassion in Vader's voice. I know. Um, no, I like. I like him. how. What I was gonna say is, I like how Vader mentions um, the Emperor sees your potential. Yeah, basically saying that he could be powerful enough to be destroyed by you, and Vader will take his place, and they can rule the galaxy together as father and son. His father and son. Yeah. And in and it was, and even in Jedi. It's so weird that the Emperor is just like, yeah, dude, like, I'm so evil <laughs> that it's just like, I'm getting out of here. I've eviled this place up like a motherfucker, <laughs> and now I want, I, I'm so evil that I want you to kill me, because I want you to be evil. Yeah. Like, he just like, he's like, dude, this kid needs to kill me so you guys can be the next chapter. Yeah. And it's so fucked up. That's so weird, you know? But he's just like, the Emperor has foreseen it. It's your destiny, is what he tells Luke. And he's just like, no. Fuck no. And then he drops himself into the abyss. Yeah, he's just like, fuck He's this. like, well, I'd rather drop than join you. Yeah. You know, and I don't think Luke actually saw a way out besides jumping. Yeah. Um, Sometimes that is the only way out, though. Yeah, that's, Jeff, that's horrible. No, but... I don't think that he it was... It out for Luke in the end. <laughs> well, that's the thing is, I, I, I think that he felt like he would make it out somehow. But in that moment in time, he wasn't really going to sit there and think, think about it too much. he just didn't care. He was, like, overwhelmed. He's just like, I'm going to fall, and I'm sure it'll work out. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, Somehow. Literally, everything was weighing on him so much that he just, like, fell. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. Just, like, kind of let himself go. Just, like, drop he just kind of went, fuck it. And yeah. And then he went through the little little trash shoot, I'm assuming it is, and um, ended up falling through... Basically, to a little antenna underneath the city. Yeah, dude. Like, literally about to die. Literally, he's dangling by one hand. Yeah, it's horrible, dude. That that whole part, even when he's climbing out from the platform. Yeah. To before Vader tells him he's fa- his, he's his father. That part freaks me out because like I'm like, bro, you lose your balance so easily, right there. You're and done. You're, you're done. Yeah. But he ends up jumping anyway. But yeah, that whole time, like, it makes me nervous he's gonna fall. Yeah. <laughs> even though I know he does it, it's still nerve wracking. Oh, it would be nerve-wracking for me, too. It's like, And plus, I the thing is about the, the Cloud City planet, like you don't know what this planet looks like. Yeah, I know. It's, it's just the clouds. Cloud, yeah. So you're dead. Uh, it's Vespin. Vespin? That's yeah. the name of the planet? Vespin. Vespin. Cloud City. Um, what is it called? Um, yeah, so then it yeah, cuts to uh, Lando and Leia, how they escape during the Millennium Falcon, and then Leia just has that feeling, you know. Well, Luke actually. Well, Luke calls out. Yeah, well, he, he calls, calls out, out to Leia. He calls out to to Obi Wan. Didn't hear anything from Obi Wan. Then he's like, oh, "Who else do I care about?" Yeah. Oh, Leia. And then she telepathically has some sort of feeling, and's like, "We got to go back because Luke's in trouble." Yeah. You know, like he didn't. He's not. Out, he's not out of this yet. They go back. They scoop up Luke. They go to leave. Star Destroyers behind them. They went back, and it's. It, it, I mean, that was a that was a bold move, you know, because the Empire is still there. You know, Darth yeah. Vader's just leaving. There's a bunch of Tie Fighters. There's freaking the Star Destroyers still there. Yeah, they were about to get massacred. You know what I mean? And Vader, then- you sure your crew has disabled the yeah. hyperdrive? Yes, we're sure, Lord Vader. And now, remember, at this point, Vader has murdered anybody who's fucked up. Yep. That admiral position has been filled with three times in this movie so I think far. So. <laughs> and then I love this scene. He's standing in front of the giant window, looking at the Millennium Falcon. They're about to fire. They fix the hyperdrive, and boom, boom. they're gone. And Vader, instead of murdering anybody, and instead oh, yeah. of saying anything, he just kind of looks out the window, turns his head a little bit, looks again, and it's just like. I'm so mad that I'm not even mad. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's just like, <laughs> I'm so angry that I'm not even going to say anything. You guys just do what you got to do. I got to be alone. Yeah, for real. <laughs> and you got to be and, in my little and I love hovel, when he, my meditation chamber. Yeah, his little meditation ball. And like, he, he, like, 
he walks away right by the admiral and he looks at him. He's like, am I not, am I dead right now? Like, yeah, he just walks by him. And I love that. We didn't even talk about, I know this is a little scene, but still, I don't think it was the admiral, but it was one of the generals who's coming in to deliver a message to Vader. And he's, you see the head underneath the helmet as the helmet's coming down. You that doesn't see. happen until Jedi. No, it happened in empire. Did it? I missed it. I'm sure that it was no, you, both. S- you see, no, you see him in his ball and an empire, but you don't see the back of his head until no, Jedi. You, no, I saw the back of his head. You did? Yeah, it was there. Oh, I had walked out of the room. At it some was, point. It's a wider shot in Jedi, I believe. No, well, I mean, I, I know this, I know the shot you're talking about. We see the back of his head. No, I just didn't see it this viewing because remember I stepped out a couple of times. Yeah, you did. You I did. think that's maybe when it happened. But Dang, I, I thought I it was do, in Jedi. I do. I do remember seeing this in. in yeah. No, it's in, definitely in cool, this. and you see how uncomfortable he looks. He's yeah. Like, what the fuck was that? It's like, you know, it looks like a goddamn. It's, it's, it's the guy who was saying that the uh, the emperor wants you to contact him immediately. Yeah, yeah, but like the, the guy's like, oh god, what the fuck? Your head looks like a fucking sucked on jawbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> or like you know those like those uh those like squishy eyeballs. Yes, like the back of one of those. I love those. I remember going to the ice skating ar- rink as a kid. That's because you're crazy, squishy. bro. I am crazy. But um, yeah. So the Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> It's fan fucking tastic. I mean, like that—that's pretty much the end, you know. Like Luke's get Luke gets his prosthetic hand, like with like the the biometric. Yeah, sorry, you call see, it. and you see it in the wrists and everything. Uh, but the bionics. What, sorry. What, what always trips me out, though, especially later on, and I get this is—I guess I get that this is like a stylistic thing, but like when they're on the ship and they're looking out at the galaxy. How? No, of course not. There's, <laughs> there's I mean, I mean. Realistically, there's no way. Yeah. But then again, it's a movie. It's also a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Who's to say that there's not like a little cluster? That you know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't mean it's a galaxy as big as ours or what we perceive our galaxy is. Maybe it's a little galaxy. Galaxies on Orion's belt. You ever seen Men in Black? That little tiny galaxy. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Think about that. I just fucking he's getting blew ex- you out of the water, bro. This motherfucker's getting existential. I'm just saying, here. bro. Like the galaxy could have just been that size, bro. <laughs> but it's cool. Like that ending scene. That, that, you know? That's a very that's a very like, and it's a cliffhanger ending. Yeah, and it's just like it's it's an it's a very appropriate middle movie. Yeah, very true. Shit has very to true. go down. Shit has to go not right. And it a lot like and it, it needs to progress. Right it was very progressive. A lot yeah. of things happened, like we said. Yep. Empire's great. Empire. Talking about it makes me. That's 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 the thing is I guess like when I was watching it yesterday, just like I guess when we were watching a new hope, like I was watching it very objectively. Yeah. Maybe that's why I didn't enjoy it as much because I was like being really critical of it, but not like critical and like saying like this is what's bad, this is what's bad. It was just being very analytic of it. I was I was analytical. An- yeah. Analytical of it. Yeah. Like just. Maybe that's why I had that weird feeling. That I love that movie so much that well, yeah, watching want... it in that form, I yeah. guess that's what bothered me. Oh no, just watch it to enjoy it. And I, I just like talking about this shit. Like, I mean, we didn't get to go into all the little details that I like to talk about. Yeah, it's, it's too, it's too much for, to talk about. Yeah, for, it's definitely we want to keep this as short, about. you know, as possible. But um, but definitely Empire, probably the best. Definitely the best of the Star Wars movies. Yeah, no, I'm I'm Definitely super excited is. to watch Jedi. Um, just so you guys know, you know, hope you enjoy this. By the way, if you if you like listening to this, I really appreciate that. If you haven't listened to the new, and Hope... if we got anything wrong, f- please feel free to um actually us in the comments. Below. No, of course, yeah, please leave comments. Um, but yeah, if you haven't listened to the, to the new Hope, um, um, uh, reaction, whatever you want to call it, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, call it the re- call it a rehash. Rehash. I want to call it a dissection. Dissection. If you haven't listened to the to the, the New Hope dissection, go ahead and listen to that. Um, the Return of the Jedi one will be up when this one is up as well. Um, after Jeff and I watch Return of the Jedi, though, and make the commentary on that, oh, yes. we are going to go see The Force Awakens. Oh my so God. be on Aren't the lookout either. for a spoiler-free reaction to that, and plus a spoiler-full, a spoilerific. There, I like that. Spoilerific version as well. Um, so those will be two oh, separate, yes. and they will be very, very clearly labeled as such. Oh, yeah. So if you don't want spoilers for that, don't click on that. But that's going to happen... Probably the week after um, well, Force I, Awakens comes out, so you have time. Like I never, I didn't plan to go see Force Awakens the week that it was released or the day that it was released because I knew it was going to be crazy in the theaters. But we're going to see it 
Thursday night. But fuck it. At midnight. We have to see it. Yeah. Because the it has thing to is, be seen. I just know when I go into work the next day, someone's going to walk in and be like, it was awesome. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. you just want to be like, when they say, it was awesome, you're like, I know! Yeah, so I'm definitely I'm definitely excited about that. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, we're yes, going to be doing some other absolutely. stuff pretty soon, but just the Star Wars stuff is what we're focusing on right now, um, just to kind of get back into it, you know? We don't have a lot of time to do this, but you know what? We're going to make some time, because we want to do some cool stuff on this channel, and you know what? I think this is I think this is cool. I, I like this. Good, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's different. Like... We've never done something like this. Well, I've always, I've always wanted to do, you know, movie reviews via podcast i think it's pretty cool like to get really in depth into a film and to discuss it about what makes it great you know so this is definitely something we should continue to do this is definitely a trend to continue in the future and you know so again we're gonna throw the ball to the listeners to the viewers to the fans and once we have wrapped up our our own Star Wars saga of reviews and rehashes and and dissections and things like that. Who knows? Maybe um, we'll do the prequels in the I, future. Well, that's what I'm saying. In the comments below, you tell us what you want us to review, and we will review it. We will watch it, and we will review it. And we oh, will cool! Give you our yeah, thoughts. it doesn't have to be Star Wars. Actually, no, it doesn't. Any have movie to be so. you want us to watch Anything. and we'll talk about, we'll do that. Series. Maybe any, one day we'll even do a movie commentary. Who knows? I, I, I That's really being thrown be. around the office. It's, it has it has been thrown around the cubicle. All right, guys. If you like this, like the video, Absolutely. subscribe to the channel. There's gonna be more coming. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you next time. And may the force be with you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>